first cross. Crucify the senses. The first cross is the cross of spiritual jihad, struggling, striving, wrestling, or jihad against sin. While we are living in the world, there are many sins that fight us. There are desires and passions. Passion means an evil desire. If a person surrenders to desires, he is not carrying his cross. Carrying your cross means that you fight. In Hebrews chapter 12, it says, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. He's saying, Think about he who suffered from the hands of sinners and the magnitude of his resistance so you can continue to strive to the point of bloodshed against sin. Then the first type of cross, or the first form of carrying the cross, is jihad against sin. Because a person imagines that carrying the cross means that when temptation or tribulation occurs, he carries it. Yes, that is a type, but it is not our topic now. Another person imagines that the cross is just saying some prayers, so he says, that he will raise his hands and be crucified with Moses. Okay, but there is more to the cross than that. Another person says that loving one's enemies is a cross. And is there anyone who accepts that certain person? And as he accepts and compliments him, it is very a very heavy cross. Okay, but there is another cross. The first cross is that you have to resist sin, to defy evil. You have not yet resisted the bloodshed. The bloodshed is the concept of the cross, and striving against sin means there is a challenge to wickedness. Because of this, in Galatians he says, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That's Galatians 5.24. What differentiates between a person who belongs to Christ and one who doesn't? All of us are called Christians, but he says, who belongs to Christ. For the person who truly is Christ's, it should appear on him that he crucified his body with its passions and desires. Because of this, St. Paul said about himself, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20 The concept of jihad against sin is the first kind of cross. Let us ponder it. Usually man is fought first by the senses, second by the thoughts, and third by habits. Senses, thoughts, and habits. That's the sequence. Sin comes to you through your eyes, enters your brain, and it becomes your nature or habit to sin. We have three axes of spiritual war or jihad. The first war is the senses. Think about the cross of the eyes as your eye is evil, as the Holy Bible says that there is an evil eye. How do you purify the evil eye? It needs a cross. It needs jihad to the point of bloodshed for the evil eye to become a simple eye. Christ warns us that if your eye is evil, your whole body will also be dark. And if your eye is simple, your whole body will also be full of light. So see that the light in you is not darkness. Matthew 6, 22. So measure yourself. Are you shining internally or not? If there are many evil thoughts, then the defect is from here. The key is that the eye is evil. How then does the evil eye turn into a simple eye? It needs resistance and jihad. This is the first cross. The cross of the senses means that you are fighting against your senses. The eye that looks at the world and craves what is in it, of course, is an evil eye. To crucify it means that you start occupying your eyes with pure, holy things. The eye that contemplates nature a lot and gets busy with our Lord a lot, such as focusing much on icons, the Holy Bible, vigil, etc. You'll notice that this eye does not crave. But the eye that watches TV, the Dish Network, and the Internet all day, of course, it is a, a laboratory for evil. To get up and turn off the TV, that's a cross. That's jihad. Why? because it contains temptation, and you must decide to complete it or not. There must be resistance even if those around you say, enough. Remember, 
If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 26. Do you understand the meaning? If people around you, even those closest to you, are obstructing you, tell them no. Do not lose your eternity. Do not take off your cross. Tell them such and such a film contains sin. It hurts me, and I will not watch it. Do not sin. And if they got angry, that's okay. Try to, you know, try to reconcile, be reconciled with them in another way. Why? Because you have not yet resisted the bloodshed striving against sin. Do you escape or not? The cross of jihad against sin comes in many forms and colors. Can a young man who is placed in difficult situations and in bad societies protect himself or not? Joseph the Pure had a cross and pitfalls every day from the homeowner herself and the world of slaves that surrounded him. The place he was in was filled with sin surrounding him, and he says, How then can, can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Genesis 39, 9. Here, there is a challenge to the will, to instinct, to desires, to ogling, but he strove and became great in God's eyes. The Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. Genesis 39.3 God was preparing him to be the world's savior. Ears. Ears need a cross. Why? You may hear so many words, songs, bad jokes, gossip, and unworthy words. Do you put a cross on your ears or not? Instead of women wearing cross-shaped earrings for decoration, let all of us put a cross on our ears. What does that mean? It means strongly resist each unworthy word that enters, even if you get tired. That doesn't, it, it does, that doesn't matter as the cross means fatigue. Resist to the point of bloodshed. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That's Psalm 1.1. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Matthew 18, 9. Do you understand the meaning? What does pluck it out mean? It means crucify it. Not literally, but leave the film that will make you lose your eternity. Get away from the company or the sitting that will let you lose your peace and salvation. Cut it off. Take sharp action against anything that weakens your senses. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Galatians 5.24 The situation isn't all about being pampered. We're not going to stand in front of the cross and say, Oh Lord, your love is so beautiful, and that's it. No, we're not going to stop at just meditation. The matter is serious. Jesus' words are sweet, and his personality is the most wonderful. So all people loved him. But he told them the reality, lest they misunderstand. The affair is not about free food, miracles every day, or sweet words. Luke 14.27 says, And he who does not take up his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Jihad is required. To be for Christ, belong to him, and be his disciple. There must be jihad. There must be war. Because of this, he gave an example and said, Whoever has an army and goes to war, doesn't he consider whether he has enough soldiers to win? That's Luke 14, 31 through 33. If not, he is a fool. You have to calculate it. The way to the kingdom contains a cross. The cross means that you will get weary, that you will struggle. It means that you will say no to things that all people say are normal. You will say no to the dress that is not befitting, even if it costs a thousand dollars. Throw the thousand dollars away, but do not make another person stumble. You will say this or that place is not befitting, even if people get angry at you, but it is not a place that God's sons enter. Cut it, because the situation needs a cross. Consider the cross of the tongue. The tongue makes trouble, lying, condemning, insulting, or spilling so many idle words. Do you crucify your tongue or not? Do you struggle in crucifying it? Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth, says Psalms, Psalm 141.3. 
You notice that many people draw the cross over their mouth when they yawn. One should draw the cross when he starts speaking, not yawning. Matthew 15, 11. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a man. Be careful. The words that come out of the mouth, these are what defile a man. Food or air that enters into your mouth is not what defiles you. Are you measuring your speech? Is there a cross on your tongue? Do you speak each word in its appropriate place? Are your words counted because you resisted to bloodshed? Do you keep mistakes from coming out? This needs training, fatigue, patience, and assess yourself every moment and every day. That's the cross. If you did not carry the cross, you do not qualify to be a disciple. The first type is the cross of the senses as Christ sanctified all his senses on the cross to show us what is the meaning of sanctifying the senses. On the cross, his eyes got severely dry, scientifically speaking, causing pain. Blood from thorns fell on his ears. The tongue, of course, it was difficult for him to talk, saying, I am thirsty. They gave him vinegar to drug him and ease his pain, but he refused to drink as he wanted to stay thirsty. His body was cut up, cut under lashing and nails. All this means that if you decline, decline to sanctify your eyes, he says, look at how my eyes look like on the cross. If you do not want to resist your tongue, look at how my words are said with great torment. What, do you, what did you do to carry your cross? Christ was crucified without sin and all his senses painfully hurt. What did you do considering all these? Your tongue, ears, eyes, hands, feet, etc. Did you get tired to sanctify them? Or do you want all these things to come by themselves? How can they come by themselves? Do you think that it comes easy for a man to become chaste in his eyes, ears, and tongue? No, it comes by carrying the cross. It came because he carried his cross, got tired, and strove against his senses until they became sanctified. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires.